Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cultivate Church Planting Podcast. Today we travel to India and meet two amazing men of God who are planting churches and sharing Christ in this beautiful country. I had the privilege of teaching at a conference for pastors and church leaders in India, and I was so impressed by their commitment to Jesus and their faith to move forward even in the midst of persecution. Well, we can't share their identities on the show or even where they're working, but I'm sure you will be blessed as you listen to these two brothers in Christ share what God is doing in India. Welcome to the Cultivate Church Planting Podcast, and uh, we have a very special episode today. I'm really excited to have my two guests on this show, and not only am I excited about these two guests, but I'm excited that I get to be in a very wonderful place, and the place is in India. And uh, I'm telling you guys, if you're listening to this, uh, God is at work in India big time yes and i've got two eyewitness testimonies <laughs> here today and um we're here if you ever hear a little back bit of background noise people ch- talking things like that we're at a uh a gathering pastors and leaders so we're hearing testimonies and things like that of what god is at, is doing and at work on the continent in the country so please welcome my special guests what do I call you, Pastor One and Pastor Two? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are so famous uh, and popular in India. I can't say their names, so we'll uh, <laughs> so we'll stick with Pastor One and Pastor Two. But uh, welcome to the show, guys. So glad that you're here to be on to talk about this. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank, thank you, you for this wonderful rich. opportunity. Yeah, and we're looking forward to hearing. Uh, I asked these guys just to give us a little testimony and, you know, we're not going to go into too much detail and things like that. Um, but just to hear about what God is doing, uh, in the country, because when we think about church planting, we're in, most of the listeners are from the United States or even, uh, like Europe, English speaking, and, uh, they don't consider that churches are being planted like crazy outside of the United States. Mm. United States actually is a little bit slower than most places, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But uh, why don't you just explain a little bit about church planting and how it's going here and what the process and all that. Just an update. Okay. The present day when we look, there is a lot of persecution and a lot of difficulties churches are facing. But when we look from a God perspective, we say we are on a blessed time in India. Mm-hmm. And we see a lot of people are coming to the Lord. Mm. And because... the the, the main reason why the government is against us because of the growth of the church. Ah. It is not they are against any of us. And the, some of our uh, dark states, we call it, it is uh, one state we call it is Bihar. Earlier they were known in, you can see in the Operation World, that magazine, maybe you are aware mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, 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 Operation World. Yeah, in that it is written, it is a graveyard of missions. Oh. But now, if you go to that states in Bihar, you will see in each and every village people are accepted Christ and there are more people coming to the Lord. Mm. And the recent couple of days back, somebody has sent me a video of a, one of the village in Bihar. In that village, 75% of people have accepted Christ in the midst of all persecutions. Wow. And the same thing with uh, Uttar Pradesh, when we see there are a lot of people coming. That's why given, government have become very crazy. They are trying to stop all the churches. But I say that presently in Indian church, we are going in the face of first century church. We are going through the persecution and the same day there are a lot of growth is yeah, happening. I was actually just thinking about that because we did a, a workshop on First Peter. Yeah. Of, of course, it's about suffering, uh, continuing in suffering, the hope that you have. I think the church here, would you agree with this? The church here in India is more similar to the church, early church that was going through those difficulties than we are in countries that maybe have a little bit more freedom to, to share the gospel yeah. and to plant churches. Yeah, it is exactly. Uh, it is exactly like the first century church that we are going through. We have got a lot of sufferings. We have got a lot of persecutions. But uh, the church are, churches are growing. So the believers also, when they are, even the believers also persecuted here in India. So they go and plant churches. So there are sufferings, but in the midst of that, there are a lot of, you know, churches are there. Church planting is happening. 
Yeah, that's great. And that's what we're talking about. You guys, between this gathering of the pastors and leaders here and the churches that have been planted over the last just recently, how, how many churches would you say have been planted in, over that this recent time, last couple of years, something? Uh, do you want a survey of all across India or it is, we will be just saying No, about just the past. ones that you're involved with uh, yeah. currently and those that are here, yeah. In India, in the presently, the church planting that we does like this, we encourage each missionaries to plant more than one churches. So we are not concentrating on only on Sunday. Usually people think Sunday is the worship Sunday. But we are encouraging pastors who have in weekdays also to have a worship services in different villages. So in that, if uh, we have some 25 pastors have come here, and if you look to them, each one of them may be working in two or three places they may be having the worship services. So it has happened in the last one and a half year after the corona, the people are open to the gospel and the pastors also have taken that passion to run more than one services. So we call, even though we say one pastor with uh, three churches, we call it, then slowly they will develop a disciples and in the future they will be handing over to the different pastors. Yeah, it's much more, um, I would say, organic than what we're used to. You know, and back in my country, it's like, oh, you have to get this big building, you yeah. have to do all these programs, you have to do all this stuff. But here, it, it seems like it's it's growing like wildfire because yeah. it's easier to just pop up gather together i mean the homes are a big place of meeting as yeah. well right that's yeah 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 where yeah. do the people meet actually yeah uh, people meet at their homes in one of their believers house they meet like actually if we say within this two three years uh, we have around 14 pastors but they have got churches almost every pastors they have churches house churches in more than through three three villages so now they are making disciples so that they can, uh, you know, send disciples and take care of that church like Paul did. So, you know, going and planting. So so you make the New Testament's the model for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I can tell you just for our listeners that are tuning in now, um, having been here and seeing firsthand, you know, this is my second time to India. Okay. But the last time I was here was 20 one, 22 years ago. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've eaten a lot of Indian food since then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, coming back and seeing uh, just the progress of the gospel, Christians, I mean, it's still difficulties like what you're talking about. But to see, I mean, I can just testify. And just hearing the testimonies of the pastors the other day, some pastors were testifying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the miraculous, you guys are seeing miraculous things happen. Yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. I'm like, a, like I'm living in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I'm yeah. living yeah. in the New Testament. Yeah, yes. very much. Yeah. Because our, most of the pastors, you know, they have a passion. And they don't have much education. Maybe they had maybe one or two years of Bible training. Maybe some of them had a six month of training. But they have a passion to go and preach the gospel. So they take their risk. So they have a lot of risk factors they have. The financially they have difficulties. Maybe socially they have the problem. Everything in midst of that, they are so engaged. And the, the Holy Spirit is helping them to motivate themselves. And they are going and starting a churches in different places. Much more than our expectations. Yeah, you'd think that with difficulties, it, all, it would almost make them not want yeah. to do this. Yeah. But I guess that's proof that God is alive. Yeah. yeah the Holy yeah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's real because they're even, what you're saying is they're even more motivated to go out and plant these churches, yeah, yeah, yeah. even in the difficult times. Yeah. 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 Like one of our pastor, you know, uh, the people of that area, they wanted to chase him out of that place. So they wanted to send him. But now... Uh, he's holding uh, every Sunday three churches, having three services. Uh, it's a small, small, so doing wisely, uh, small, small churches, maybe 20, 20 people gather in one place. So that is how it's happening. Uh, yeah, God is doing a great thing here in India. What, what would you say the biggest um, difficulty is as far as if some of these guys want to go out and plant churches? What would be the biggest roadblock for them or hindrance to, the, to doing that? The presently, today also we have studied about the rejection. Mm -hmm. And many villages they go, 
and once they come to know they are preaching the gospel they reject them okay. they won't allow them to come to the villages and those who convert the no converts also have been pushed out of the villages mm-hmm. that is one big challenges the pastors are facing the no believers are coming but they are not accepted in the local locality okay and the sacrifice in the <clears throat> excuse me uh, sacrificing their um, uh, living hood mm-hmm. and living maybe their homes yeah. they are f- fully socially they are rejected so that is a one big challenge all the pastors are facing yeah but uh, immediately we are seeing uh, maybe there may be one family is coming then immediately two three more families will be joining okay then they are becoming a majority in their faith Do you do you see even joy in these times when they're in in these difficult situations that they have a joy that's there or are they cuz I'm asking it but I kind of know the answer because I'm here with many of these guys and their families too and there there's a lot of joy there you wouldn't expect that they're going through difficulties but they are yeah they are yeah. joyful yeah they are joyful they are it's it's actually they are happy to serve the lord yeah so then uh, you know every a week we have a online meeting you know uh, a fellowship yes. encouraging them zoom yeah, yeah. zoom meeting yeah, so yeah, yeah. we teach them the word of god so they are so happy yeah so i love that because back like when i came here 21 years ago we did, i didn't even have a cell phone yeah. you know <laughs> and then but now we have the ability to meet so you meet once a week with the pa- the different pastors who are planting churches yes, yes. yes. that's amazing yeah, yeah. because a lot of them i mean talk about the the biblical education is not as great yeah but the spiritual commitment would be even greater than yes. for example in the west yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true so you you're coming in um and both of you guys we're go, not going into too much detail but our educated guys theological education um you're able to come in and minister to those pastors yeah. Yeah, yes yeah, yeah. uh in a theological way yeah yeah and even some of the guys from uh you know my country and different can can also join in on that and participate in that from time to time is that right or yes yes okay yeah. they can participate and yeah. we are encouraging all our pastors you know even though they started into ministry as they are growing in their ministry we are encouraging them to have a education for them like they can join in any of the bible colleges has a correspondence course yeah online can, courses yeah, yeah. so we are encouraging them to equip themselves also study more uh-huh. and some day the they before joining the ministry they did not get an opportunity so now we are encouraging them okay now we are in ministry god has brought you to a particular place yeah. now try to learn more so yeah. that will help our weekly bible studies that is also helping them that's great so what's the goal for the future what are your plans for the ministry and for the pastors yeah we want to plant many churches that is a that is a <laughs> that's what we like to hear yeah, multiplication <laughs> for this conference uh, we have got more than uh, 10 to 15 timothys we call them timothys okay. a Disciples. pastor he will be like uh, discipling a believer in his church uh-huh. and then uh, that's a timothy that's yeah. a timothy okay. so he will become a next church planter for his church uh-huh. so we have about 15 of them coming for this conference wow so they will be our so th- that is our aim so we want to plant as many as i don't want to tell the number exactly uh-huh. but as many as churches that we can plan will yeah. be house church small church yeah. wherever we can so uh we have got after this uh conference we have got two three people they'll be going for a church planting that's amazing and yeah. we're also um the cultivate church planting program is coming alongside of uh you know helping primarily you guys who are leading this i call it a movement mm. uh and then coming alongside with church planting resources uh man- church planting manual that we we provide has actually been translated into the uh, indian language yeah and that way uh, can get in the hands of these guys that are going out and planting yeah that's going to be uh, very helpful for for them yeah yeah looking forward to it so what can what can we do i know um it's not very easy for you guys to be planting churches and with persecution and things. Of course it's not very easy for us as westerners to come in because we immediately we stand out, yeah. you know, um 
And you know, we we are tourists actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful country. We've had a wonderful, wonderful time. Some of the spots of the the country are a little bit busy for me. You know, yeah. there's a lot. You guys have a lot of people in India. You yeah. know that. We are the number one now. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe God is giving more people to India so that when the heaven will be filled with Indians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it. Yeah, you're trying to take over heaven, huh? <laughs> well, you better keep planting churches because you know that you got yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of people to convert. So. See, uh, <laughs> the, 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 one of the big thing nowadays, presently, all the pastors, all you know, making a uh, what to say, starting a new. There is a fear in some people. Mm-hmm. It is there to going out and very openly doing the preaching and all. Yeah. But still people are doing. So they are they're yeah. going out openly yeah, and preaching. They are openly okay. Doing. Wow. Then we are now encouraging our pastors to mobilize the believers. Mm-hmm. We uh, one of the way that we reach to the new members through our believers because that uh, believer how maybe their relatives or their friends mm-hmm. they have an access to them. Yeah. As a pastor or a missionary if I go and meet them it is a difficult to preach to them so we are equipping our all the believers to preach the gospel uh. and so they bring them to the churches then we get an opportunity as a pastors to share the gospel to them yes so okay. that is a one way we are reaching out to the people then all the family occasions we are encouraging them to make us a gospel like somebody is celebrating a birthday invite all your friends ah, even if you don't yeah. have enough money then the church we are telling okay at least we can sponsor some snacks oh wow, yeah that's a good idea yeah, so, so the right. church is sponsoring some snacks to so, invite yeah. the extras yeah. then yeah we're the all pa- working together yeah pastor yeah. will be there so he can please share maybe five uh-huh. ten minutes gospel uh-huh. so there is a opportunity there is no opposition comes in do you find that some people have never understood the real gospel before when they come to these kind of gatherings and things are they hearing for the first time like because people are familiar with christianity they're familiar with jesus here in a general way but what about when the gospel is shared clearly do they do you find people are responding well yeah people respond yeah once yeah. they come once they know very clearly they are responding they mm-hmm. respond yeah and that's what we want to do is get it the clear message yeah yeah and then how do they get involved in the church gatherings from there they just get invited yeah actually uh, the family where mm-hmm. we had this parties mm-hmm. so we tell that family now you how to invite them so you how to do the follow up usually i tell the families believers in my church that you are going to be the pastor for those newcomers for uh, another three months yeah, yeah, yeah. share them uh-huh. uh, sit with them yeah. share the gospel with them pray with them yeah so then after three months uh, try to bring them to the church so uh, this is our, so it takes time yeah it takes time yeah because it seems like and we even talked about this one time before with the current conference that we're at is there's a lot of people who would do who mean evil against the church and against you so you have to kind of be careful where who is involved and how soon they get in, included in the activities yes exactly wow we have like spice yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's such a it seems like such a difficult thing but i'm just kind of thinking out loud and i know many of our listeners here would think this as well but would we trade comfort and security like we have like in my town i don't have to worry about who i invite to the yeah but at the same time the people in the church they don't a lot of people don't care they just they show up they don't it's not real but to live in this kind of a system it has to be really be meaningful yeah and you know i think r- relatively recently there's always been some persecution you can tell me if i'm wrong but recently it's been even more the yeah, persecution is more it is there yeah yeah the different way in the early year we have seen the persecution they will be only concentrating on the missionaries ah, while okay. we are doing the mission work or the pastors yeah but now even if we are going through the road they catch us uh-huh. then they will take us to the police station <laughs> and putting a uh, wrong some allegations yeah. against us i'm laughing something. because i thought there was a testimony of the guy riding his uh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> riding his uh, was it a motorcycle he was <laughs> riding yeah. yeah so he god gave him the ability to outrun the yeah. the guys who were chasing yeah, so, him uh, <laughs> and 
and now they are catching the new believers also to yeah. to, to, so create, not just the pastors and yeah, to create a fear among the believers yeah, yeah. but we are seeing you know the new believers are speaking out yeah. ah really ah they are openly speaking out it is okay. our, by will with our choice we went to yeah. the churches yeah. there yeah. was no force there is no allurement exactly yeah. yeah so they are by their will they are coming and to the church and there has to be a respect for the choice of the person if the person wants yeah. to be yeah. in church he should be allowed to be in church but they are not allowing that one. Yeah. Oh. yeah even yeah. though see in india if the government says according to the constitution whatever you want to do do i can tell the more than half 50 percentage of india will be christians by now within yeah. a, <laughs> one minute yeah that's we got to pray for that yeah that freedom yeah. is not yeah, given yeah we got to pray for that freedom because you know, it's an advantage in our constitution the freedom is there right. but it is the not allowed to practice yeah okay so if it is allowed to practice you see there will be because people wanted to come because that fear they are staying back yeah yeah they are maybe false allegations maybe court cases uh-huh. going to jail that fear is probably up. some that are actually doing some bad things they point to them as examples yeah, yeah, yeah. um well let's <coughs> let's answer a couple questions and we, we can be uh done this has been so interesting i feel like we could talk all day about this but yeah. uh what can we do i'm talking about from our perspective the western perspective that can help in a way that's not going to hinder what you guys are doing organically by the holy spirit here because god is at work here whether we help or not yeah but i'm i'm speaking for myself i want to help Obviously I'm here to to teach and de- that sort of thing. But what can we do? I know I know number 1 I'm going to answer for you financially because a lot of times um that's not number 1 but I know one and that's financially because you know like you said a lot of times guys will lose jobs mm-hmm. the church will be forced to pay higher if they even rent to the church they pay, yeah. pay higher higher rent. We've talked about this already before the recording. Um so there is that and uh for those who are interested can can do so uh through CGN Calvary Global Network will be able to to facilitate if someone's listening to this they want to connect uh calvaryglobalnetwork.com but what are some of the practical things that we can do that would be able to assist besides that financial aspect uh you can uh the number one is pray number one is prayer that's what i meant when yeah. i said <laughs> uh, uh, you can pray about these days even uh, uh, pastors are also having a kind of fear you know yeah. because of this uh, all the things which are going on yeah. so you have to pray that the, the you know like paul says that you know uh, pray for me that whenever i preach i may preach the word of god in boldness yes, so that amen. is very necessary amen and then other than that uh, a lot of uh, projects you know the uh-huh. way uh, you can help yep. like pastors uh, to get some transportation motorbikes yeah 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 uh, things like that yeah so, so you'll let and there's a couple of people within um Calvary Chapel well there's a lot of Calvary Chapel yeah. uh, CGN uh, churches and other churches that are able to meet uh those needs yeah. you know as they as they become aware of them you we'll see another thing is like uh, help them to become self supporting okay uh, maybe once in a while so help them to become self supporting you know, set yeah. up a small business something like that i was going to say that's a that's something that um you know we used to do when i was working in in east africa no nope, not really persecution where i was but yeah. still it was to enable those pastors to be involved in full time now uh, in this conference yeah. we have a pastor who is uh, doing a work kind of work welding you know welding oh yeah welding yeah. so then uh, we wanted to make him self supportive so ah. then we asked him what do you want so he was working under someone uh-huh. he needed the equipment okay so we talked to one of our friend so he was ready to buy all the equipment uh, that's a great cuz in it, its i i would encourage our listeners to think about this because for us we you know the the bible is clear the churches that had had the finances or the motorbikes or whatever it was contributed to the ones who needed it Yeah. Because God's at work, we want to back that. We want to yeah. get behind that. And we're doing so in prayer. I mean, prayer is number one. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. And to see this uh see this amazing thing that's happening here, I just want I I wish we could go into more details, but it's just really amazing what you guys are doing and what your pastors are doing yeah, yeah, in this yeah. ministry. So any last words to share with us? Yeah, it is uh, the same thing you, you can 
for the stability of the church we are looking everywhere you know we are helping pastors to construct their house or uh, mm-hmm. church halls mm-hmm. so that also one of the concern we can see yeah. so that even if we are not giving them a monthly support if yeah. they have their own building they right. can survey the church will be survived ah, that's nice so that is a one for, our, for their own building our big, own big, building big pair most of the pastors may have their own land if you can buy, uh, construct and give them it will be great for them yeah. Yeah. so that is a one big thing because the persecution stops a lot of things but if there is a particular place for them to come together for the worship mm-hmm. the church will survive ah oh, interesting so then the pastor will have no need to pay the rent he yeah. can save the rent yeah when he may not be having enough money for serving him monthly but at least he can carry on with the ministry so, so having a, a venue yeah, that own, is under their control of yeah, their own ownership yeah at this point that's very essential yeah, building for, is very essential ah, okay now, that's now. Good, good to know yeah so that yeah. is one big thing pastor yeah uh, i just want to thank you thank all the <laughs> listeners and thank yeah. all the prayer partners mm-hmm. and all those who are helping us thinking about us thank mm-hmm. you very much and uh, uh thank you from india <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i just want to say to you guys that uh you know you may not be known um to our listeners at yeah. this time but in heaven we're going to really be cheering you guys as yeah. you uh you know you lead the pr- procession down the road we'll be like ah oh, those are the guys <laughs> so i thank you for your humility yeah. for your willingness to work in these situ- situations yeah. and yeah. for your love of the lord and love of his word so yeah. thanks guys for being on oh, okay please thank continue you. to come me like this oh yeah yeah we will yeah, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. sure yeah these meetings are good all right good stuff okay thank you god bless you all. yeah thank god you. bless you god guys bless you. thanks for listening the cultivate church planning podcast is part of cgn media a podcast network that points to christ check out cgnmedia.org for more great shows and ways to support the ministry